I'm Jeff Runnels, president of Keystone RV Company. Thank you very much for your purchase and we appreciate your business. Whether you're a seasoned expert or a first time RVer, there's a lot to learn about the operation of your new RV. We want your camping experience to be as enjoyable as possible. So we've put together this short video to help answer as many questions as we can, as well as help familiarize you with some of the basic systems, switches, and controls in your new Keystone RV. Remember, your Keystone dealer is also an excellent source of information, as well as your best source for service. Thank you, and welcome to the Keystone family. Hi, I'm Adam Ziegler with Keystone RV. In order for you to get the most out of your new Outback, I'm going to walk you around some of the standard features and show you some basic maintenance. We'll begin here at the front of your RV. Underneath this cover, you'll find your propane tanks. There are two of them connected by an auto changeover regulator. So if one runs dry, the other one will kick in. Behind that, you'll find your battery hookups. When your RV is in storage and not connected to an electrical outlet, you'll want to disconnect your battery. Some models are equipped with a gel-coated fiberglass cap with multiple coats of automotive grade paint and clear coat to help it stay looking new for a long time. These caps also have the key guard protective coating on the lower section to help protect your cap against chips from debris kicked up while driving. Check your cap after trips for damage. Some cracks are covered under your warranty, but impact damage is not. It's good to get any damage repaired right away so you can avoid problems getting worse. This is the outside access to your gas electric water heater. Now you want to check your owner's manual for the maintenance reasons why you need to get in here. But one main reason is for when you're draining your water tank, like when you're winterizing your RV. This is the outside access to your RV refrigerator. Now you'll need to get in here for some basic maintenance that's described in your owner's manual. But the main thing you want to pay attention to is this tube. It's a drainage tube to make sure that moisture gets outside of your RV instead of dripping inside. Make sure it's fully extended whenever running your RV refrigerator. Some models are equipped with a docking station that consolidates a variety of features, including cable and satellite hookups, your fresh water tank fill and your city water connection, as well as your black tank flush. You also have a shower hookup here as well. On models that don't have a docking station, you'll find most of these features spread around the outside of your RV. This is the hookup for your shore power electric. Now hookups could be attached and retractable, or like this one, detached and plugged in on both ends. Depending on your model, your RV could run on 50 amp or 30 amp power. Be sure your power plug matches the shore power pedestal before trying to plug in. In some cases, you may need an adapter to make it fit. The use of adapters is only recommended in temporary circumstances and should not be used to power major appliances like air conditioners. One feature you'll probably use every time you go camping is your patio awning. Your Outback is equipped with a power awning that extends and retracts with the push of a button. And you'll need to check manufacturer specifications to get correct information on setting the brake control. Some Outback models include the convenient and versatile in-command system. Now this system offers the same controls and readouts that a standard control panel would, with a few added features, including digital display with modifiable controls so you can rename them and move them around as you'd like. You can also download an app to your smart device so you can have controls and readouts wherever you go. Your RV's electrical system can run on either battery or standard household electric. Because your RV is self-contained, you can camp comfortably when not hooked up to outside power by running on your battery and propane. This is called dry camping or boondocking. Systems you can operate when not hooked up to outside power include systems you can operate when not hooked to AC include the water system, water heater, furnace, most interior and exterior lights, slide rooms, power patio awning, and sound system. You'll need to plug in to run your air conditioner or your microwave. The heart of your RV's electrical system is the power center. It contains a converter to charge your 12 volt battery, as well as fuses to protect your 12 volt systems. It also has breakers to protect your 115 volt AC systems. Should a problem ever arise with any of your electrical systems, first check to see the pole you are plugged into is supplying power to the coach. Then if your GFI switch has been tripped, you can find it on one of your outlets, usually in the bathroom. If that doesn't solve the problem, you should check the power center next. Look for blown fuses for 12 volt appliances and lights, and trip breakers for 120 volt appliances. Always seek to find out the cause of a blown fuse or tripped breaker before proceeding. Your RV refrigerator is a dual system that can run on either standard household electric or on propane. To control that, you'll go up to this button here. When set to auto, it'll switch between gas and household electric automatically. 
but if you press it, it'll switch to gas power and stay on that no matter what. RV refrigerators are absorption refrigerators, so they operate a little bit differently than your fridge at home. The manufacturer recommends that you take at least eight hours of cooling before storing food inside to make sure that it reaches the correct temperature. Your Outback offers a first-class entertainment experience, including HDTV, DVD player, and hookups for Bluetooth and wired audio devices. It also offers up to three different listening zones, including outside speakers. Now those listening zones vary by model, so you want to check each one to determine their location. When using the roof-mounted antenna to receive your TV signal, make sure the antenna booster is turned on. The booster is located on one of your cable outlets inside the coach. You will see a green light on the booster when it is powered up. When you are viewing the signal through cable, you'll need to turn the booster off to get a clear picture. Your RV's heating and air conditioning system operates just like a thermostat found at home, with controls for temperature and fan levels. In extremely hot temperatures, we suggest you leave your window blinds closed, open the exterior doors as infrequently as possible, and park in the shade when available in order to help your air conditioner keep up with the demands of the heat. Your slide-outs run on 12-volt power. They're controlled either by switches on your wall or, if included, the in-command system. Now, to support effective operation, we recommend that you operate your slide outs at least once a month. If you experience any difficulty extending a slide room, there are several things to check before considering contacting your dealer for a repair. Slides may not extend if your battery is low on charge, or check for obstructions. Even a small object can prevent your slides from extending correctly. You should also double check that your RV is level. Your RV slide rooms can shift out of alignment if not leveled correctly before extending your slide rooms. If the automatic system is not working, you can retract your slides manually. For more information, you can check your owner's manual or check out the Keystone RV video, How to Override Your Slide-Out Mechanism, found on the Owners tab of the KeystoneRV.com website. For your safety, carbon monoxide and propane detectors have been installed in every unit. Now, these units are usually wired directly into your electrical system, but some do still run on battery. A smoke detector is installed in every unit. Most of these detectors are powered by 9-volt battery. All detectors should be tested before each trip and once a week if you're doing extended camping. Emergency egress windows are marked from the factory with the word exit. You can also identify them by their red handles. Now, exit windows could be an entire window or, like this one, a portion of a larger window. Review window locations and operational instructions posted on the window with everyone staying in the trailer. Before hitting the road, check to make sure all egress windows are securely latched to prevent accidental release while traveling. Your Outback is handcrafted by experts. Now we take pride in every RV that we build here at Keystone, but we are still human. Damage or defects should be taken to your dealer for repair, but you'll want to check your owner's manual for information on service and warranties. Regular maintenance on your RV is exceptionally important. Now we've covered some of that here, but certainly not all of it. For an extensive maintenance schedule, you'll want to check your owner's manual. Now as you camp, questions could arise. Nothing can compare to a full walkthrough with your dealer, but if there are questions that your dealer can't answer, you'll want to contact Keystone Customer Service right away. Reach Keystone RV Customer Service by calling 866-425-4369, emailing ownerrelations at keystonerv.com, or on the Keystone RV Facebook page.